We just wrapped up a whole bunch of events, but don't sweat it if you missed them because we caught a lot of it on camera for your convenience. Our money management earned us a higher credit rating and development is going to move faster. Let's review what's going on in Richland County. Small business owners got an in-depth look at working with government agencies at a forum sponsored in part by Richland County. The attendees learned how to work with local governments and institutions as well as the procurement process that many of these governments share. The information will help these small businesses do business with these potential customers. We had a tremendous turnout. Everyone is gathering as much information as they can from the different vendors and presenters that's here today um, to pertain into doing business um, with the city, the county, USC, or other private entity. So I think with us can um, keep on this momentum, I think it's, it's great. Um, the new small and, small and minority business, new entrepreneur, they, I think um, it's a great wealth of information for them. And hopefully when we do part two, which is early next year, um, GSA will be there to bring in the federal entity of this and this will um, additionally give them another step to go as far as what, can, what kind of service and what can be done as far as bidding and contract with all the different governmental entities. Councilman Tory Rush recently gathered experts on the new federal health care system to educate citizens about the impact of the new system on their lives and give them insight into the options they have. We're bringing in experts who uh, understand the Affordable Care Act. Uh, with this being a new law, even though it was in place in 2010, the rollout is new. And, and being that our state uh, didn't participate from the beginning, there's lack of information out about the Affordable Care Act. So this forum is to bring constituents and citizens together to educate them about what the Affordable Care Act is, how it can or cannot affect them, and uh, just so they can get their questions answered. This is not a political process. It, it is strictly to, to educate the citizens on what their options are as, as it relates to the Affordable Care Act, which came into play October 1. And everybody's saying, what does that mean? And how does that affect me? So um, this, we wanted them to have the information firsthand from the experts who understand what this, uh, what this uh, Affordable Care Act is and what it's all about. Remember that you need to have a photo ID when you vote on November 5th. The ID can be a South Carolina driver's license, a South Carolina DMV ID card, a voter registration card with photo, a federal military ID, or a U.S. passport. Hey, I'm Chanda Cooper with the Richland Soil and Water Conservation District, and I'm here to tell you about our Arbor Day Youth Contests. In South Carolina, Arbor Day is observed on the first Friday in December. It's a day set aside to celebrate, plant, and care for trees. We have lots of reasons to celebrate trees in our state, as more than 150 different types of trees, including 10 species of pine and over 20 species of oak, are native to South Carolina. This year's Arbor Day contest is open to Richland County students in grades K through 12. Students are asked to learn about one of South Carolina's tree species, then create a poster, video, bulletin board, or a piece of writing sharing what they know. Winners will receive cash prizes and their works will be featured at the State Arbor Day Celebration at Harbison State Forest in December. The deadline to enter the contest is November 8th and rules and entry forms are available on our website. The Conservation District is also hosting a wild hog and nuisance species management workshop in St. Matthews on November 7th. This workshop will provide valuable information to landowners and land managers about how to deal with species including wild hogs, beavers, armadillos, and coyotes. For more information about either of these opportunities, visit us on the website at rcgov.us slash rswcd or give us a call at 576-2080. Richland County recently held the 9th Annual Neighborhood Planning Conference featuring sessions on fair housing, matching grant successes, community gardening, and neighborhood issues. Um, sessions today included a keynote from Ellen Dunham-Jones. She's an architecture professor from Georgia Tech and she talked to us about how to retrofit suburbia, how we can take old dying and decaying strip centers and redesign them and redevelop them into healthy, thriving communities. It, across the country, we're seeing really interesting examples. People are getting really creative with what to do with all of those vacant big box stores. And many of them are being turned into much more community serving uses. So they're being turned into libraries, schools, churches, gymnasia. 
Our aging suburban corridors are often some of our least loved landscapes. They're really pretty decrepit, pretty awful places, ecologically, economically, socially, and just aesthetically. They're, they're, they're sort of de uh, sometimes pretty depressing. And they present a tremendous opportunity to actually reconnect affordable housing with affordable transportation. Our, this country's model of default of affordable housing has been drive till you qualify. The cheapest housing is on the cheapest land, the furthest away. And yet the transportation costs often eat up the savings associated with that cheaper housing. Along our corridors, on the site of, of those failed strip malls, those aging uh, retail and commercial sites, now there's an opportunity to actually, you know, turn some of those corridors into transit boulevards where we bring in some bus that has a, has a dedicated lane so it actually moves more effectively than the rest of the, uh, for, for the, than the cars and tr get, get some trees along there that make it actually a grand address, a proud address that where, where people would be happy to live and then redevelop some of those sites with with proud urban housing along the corridors that now would have access to that transportation. And that's really going to be, I think, the new model that, of, of affordable housing that this country needs. In addition to Ellen Dunham Jones, we had a number of wonderful sessions that talked about dementia in your community, diversity in your community. The Sheriff's Department brought out the community action team to tell everybody how they can have a safer community. Um, sessions on affordable housing, transportation. Comet is here today telling us about transit and, and their plans for the future. We knew that there would be about a one year lag between the vote and when we'd receive our first dollars. So we set some money aside just in case that if we weren't successful, we could match some grants and do some good things. But that if we were successful, we'd be able to launch new services. And that's what we did. We launched some new services all the way back in May. So we've been operating those for uh, realistically almost seven months now. So that put back some midday services, put in some evenings, and beefed up our Saturdays. So we're about to get our first big push from the penny in the next couple of weeks. So that's going to allow us to then backfill and get some other things done. But what's really important is we're going to be adding some new equipment in the coming months. We're working right now to add some small vehicles to our fleet. They'll have uh, USB plug-ins for smartphone chargers, and they'll be the small vehicles. And you'll see those on low ridership routes. You're already seeing, hopefully, our new wraps all over downtown with our new logo and our new design. We're the Comet now. CMRTA is kind of the old transit system. The Comet's the new transit system. The Comet is just kind of a, a cool way to say Central Midlands Transit, CMT. So our focus is in the name is the Comet. And everything you see that happens from this point forward will get the Comet treatment. We've been able to also do some really great stuff in um, partnership with the University of South Carolina at our new 2001 route, Gamecock Express. Great ridership and we've actually made a little bit of money off of that. So we've been able to turn that around and, and put it back into our system again. You know, we're, we're, we're putting our services back out for our customers. It's what we do. We've launched a brand new website and that brand new website's gotten some national attention and some critical acclaim. We hope to be recognized in the industry as the, one of the best websites and it works on your smartphone, your tablet, as well as your desktop. You can even bookmark it and it kind of looks like its own app. So it's a, it's a really, really neat thing. Yeah, it, it does take a, a long time to actually develop plans for a widening or intersection improvement. So hopefully next summer um, we'll have resurfacing, dirt road paving, and then maybe some enhancement projects like sidewalks um, that don't require fully developed plans. Um, that's my goal, is to have those things out for construction next summer. Uh, and then hopefully next fall, I also would like to put out the top five intersections, um, the highest ranked ones, for a design build contract because that's another a delivery tool to get projects to construction quickly as opposed to a design bid build where you just fully design it, you bid it, then you build it. A design build, you, you do some very preliminary design and you put it out to a contractor and a contractor has to finish the design based on your requirements. Um, so it gets you to construction a lot quicker. So that would happen. So this summer we would have the resurfacing, dirt road paving and enhancement sidewalks that don't require full developed plans. Late next fall you would see the top five intersections go out as design build potentially, and then the following summer is when the first widening project would go to construction. Uh, the summer of 2015 is when Hardscrabble Road is currently scheduled to go to construction. And the Richland County residents, they're going to see signs galore on all these projects uh, to make sure to point out that 
of projects funded by the penny sales tax because they need to know that the, their funds are being spent on these projects and they're being spent in an efficient and a logical manner. There is a website, the Richland Online website. There's a the, the Penny uh, link that you can click on and that link it gives you a list of every project whether it be a widening project or whether it be a sidewalk project. They're all there so I encourage citizens to go to that website if they're curious as to whether their street is uh, going to get paved or whether it's going to have enhancements like sidewalks or it's going to get widened to go to that uh, because we do have a list of projects that are already identified, they're high priority projects and uh, that would be very helpful to them. It also gives a lot of background information about the program and uh, the origination of the program and uh, the transportation advisory committee that's in place to help uh, be stewards of the oversight of the program. Just a wonderful slate of sessions, a great group of citizens and council members and other folks from around the area visited us today and we hope to see you next year. Doing business with Richland County is now faster and more efficient. That's because aspects of the development process, planning, building codes, business services, fire plan review, floodplain regulation and engineering are all now together under one roof as part of a major overhaul to create Richland County's Development Services Center. The county's improved development related functionality is a culmination of months spent by the county's Development Services Task Force updating policies, procedures, and relocation of key staff and even its physical appearance to improve customer relations. Richland County's financial management practices earned high marks from one of the nation's leading credit rating agencies, enabling the county to borrow money for projects at a reduced cost to taxpayers. Standard & Poor's Rating Services raised its long-term rating on Richland County's long-term general obligation debt to triple A making it one of only three counties in the state to achieve this status from the agency. The AAA rating is an indication S&P believes the county has an extremely strong ability to meet its financial obligations and can result in lower borrowing costs from Richland County, which in turn is good news for taxpayers. The upgrade to a AAA credit rating puts the county within the highest rating category, allowing it to join Greenville County and Charleston County. This rating gives the county a higher credit rating from S&P than the state of South Carolina and the United States of America. That's going to do it for this Richland Review. If you have any questions about any of the information or events that have taken place in this video, please feel free to email us at pio at rcgov.us.